What does it take to get a gangster to swab his patch for a clown suit? I'm going to tell you, it's one dad really motivated to change his parenting style and one young boy, his son, wanting a clown at his five-year-old birthday. These, this is his story. Being a father, I never thought it could be this easy, you know. I grew up in a household where everything was controlled by violence and I thought to myself, man, this is not much fun. But now, after 13 weeks of this course, I've had more fun in my childhood just trying out new things. It's a whole new learning curve, like learning I'm a son again, being a child again, but having to be the parent too. So I'm teaching them while I'm learning myself. Yeah, I wish my father had help. After living and working in the South Auckland area for the last 35 years, this story reinforces my belief that deep down all parents want to be the best parent they can be. Fifteen years ago, three colleagues and I were working for the government, delivering services to families who had children with special needs. The problem, as we saw it then, was that the focus was too narrow and that Māori whānau didn't have the choice, only mainstream early intervention. So our solution was to set up a kaupapa Māori option for parents needing support for their young children. We cut and pasted ourselves a constitution. We spent $10 and registered with the company's office and we were away. <laughs> All my Rangi Trust had started, reclaiming traditional Māori knowledge to guide our developing service models for families. We wanted to provide holistic support to be able to keep families intact, give them the confidence and knowledge they needed to ensure strong, positive attachments between parents and children and all of their family members. Today, our team at Ohumairangi Trust believes that the solutions still lie in our communities. We have been tackling the impact of relationship and custody breakdown on parenting through using Hoki Kitsareto. It's a, it's a program based on UK Malo parenting and we decided to adapt it for use with our community because of shared underlying principles of manakitanga, of whanaungatanga, whakapapa and ako. That is acceptance, making connections, nurturing and hospitality. This program is one day a week, a whole day a week for 14 weeks. Initially we go and visit parents and explain what's required of them. This includes having a home video of mealtime taken where we come into their homes with the camera and that is going to be used in afternoon sessions. We tackle the barriers that families have told us exist for them. We send out buses from the Mangadees Community Centre where transport is needed and our team of experienced childcare workers who are all trained in mellow parenting look after the children. This is what a typical day looks like. Morning sessions, mothers and fathers are separate, focus is on self-development. Then there's lunch, we all join together with the children and eat together. Then after lunch, we set up activities for parents and children to be together, to interact, to practice new skills. And this is followed by an afternoon session where mothers and fathers come together in either parenting sessions for babies or for toddlers. Many of the referrals we receive are for parents who are grappling with an addiction, sometimes the result of historical, intergenerational or institutional trauma who face daily denigration as they grapple with poverty, unemployment, inadequate housing, as these stats bear out. The morning groups work through a series of questions where all of us who are present are equal participants. Our firm belief is that people can make significant change when they experience some power and control over the circumstances. The source of this power can come from the trust and confidence they build in the group sessions as they are encouraged to reflect on their pasts. The group becomes a, pl a, a place to process difficult emotions, to make connections with others in the group, receive social support, give that support to others, and make connections. This is Whanaungatanga and Whakapapa in action. We use strength-based feedback on the videos of the meal times. And this is a powerful way for parents to see what, it actually, what actually happens, to appreciate these and others' successes 
and to maybe look at areas for improvement. Parents also, or whose experience to date has been one of continual criticism, see and hear for themselves that they can be successful. We regularly witness parents being inspired to make huge decisions that transform their lives. They break the cycle of disadvantage themselves and sometimes these have been operating for generations. It's become clear to us that history doesn't have to repeat itself. It is possible for parents who have had difficult childhoods to make sense of those experiences and to go on and change any negative inter interactions with their own children as their new self-understanding grows and they break that cycle. One mum who had had her first children while she was living on the streets never thought she could be helpful to anybody else, let alone make suggestions that others were willing to try and have find success for themselves in. When one father had his, his um, video filmed, it was clear that he'd never fed his child before. Um, so after some reassurance from mum, um, this, his two and a half year old son let dad feed him. Now this father has never looked back. In fact, I'm really pleased that we're going to hear from him later. He's chosen to inspire other parents through his music. He's become a very strong advocate for fatherhood. One mother decided to take us through her changes as she made them. She arrived one morning, five children in tow, saying she couldn't go home. She had decided that day that she wasn't going to be using or supplying methamphetamine anymore, so the home wouldn't be a safe place. And luckily for us, that day we were able to find a woman's refuge who could house them. Um, at lunchtime we organised a uh, police escort to take them home to gather their belongings. They came back, finished the day, and then we took them to their new home. New schools across the fence, new lives. On one occasion, a grandmother came along asking if she could bring her two daughters. She'd found out she was terminally ill and she was looking after the grandchildren. So she wanted to support her daughters to be able to take their children back. Um, not only did she facilitate this rebuilding attachment between mothers and their children to be able to give the children back to their mums, but she also started a process of healing a family rift. They'd been isolated from the rest of their whanau for many years over disagreements around gang affiliations. And so she, with her daughters, um, used to come back each week and tell us of the progress they were making. They'd all decided together that they were going to heal this family rift and they were going to encourage the new generations to meet each other. And yet another dad who was um, part of the program, early on he had to move to Whakatane. He was hoping to be able to carry on Kitsuritu down there, but the program was only available for fathers in counties Manukau. So he caught the bus up each week, five hours each way. To, be, to continue with the program. And he would travel back and run through the program with his Fano and his mates down in Whakatane. Because we want to be sure that the services we offer to families, Uhu Mairangi Trust has been researching the effectiveness of this program. That's what my study has been about. We have found huge improvements for the parents in their general health and well-being, in the lifting of their wairua, in um, improving parenting tasks and uh, in managing children's uh, challenging behaviours. We've found that the children's behaviours have improved and their social and emotional skills have improved and their general development has, has um, accelerated. We took videos the mealtime videos before the group started and again at the end of the group and had them sent away for coding. We were looking at positive and negative interactions and what we found is that by the end of the program positive interactions had increased by threefold during the mealtime and negative interactions had reduced by ten times. So you can understand why we're enthusiastic about this program. 
we, we ran some focus groups and this is what one of the parents said. I remember growing up in fear of my father and didn't want that for my children. And also being asked these questions, taking me back, has helped me, you know. I'm 31 now and it's taken me this long to actually forgive my father for what he did. And now that I have, it's a huge weight off my shoulders and I feel like I can move on and be the father I never had. I liked it when we got to talk about our past, about how we once were, helps us make what we are today. It starts from your backgrounds, but you can learn new things and change when you realise, and it made me a better man. I don't hit my son anymore. I used to, but I've snapped out of it. We've been so moved by the depth and significance of changes happening that we have trained to train others in Mano Parenting. So we're appealing for support to do this, so that Hoki Kitareto is available right across Auckland and in other areas of New Zealand where we have had requests from. This is one of our graduation groups and the ages of the participants range from a 65-year-old nanny and a 14-year-old mother. We invite other DHBs and other funders to join with us to enable more families to break the cycle and make transformational change that we know is possible. Kia ora koutou.